Welcome to the Meridian Center in St. Catharines, Ontario, home to the 2021 Canada Summer Games for game number two today. We have the two and one Guelph Nighthawks taking on the defending champion, Saskatchewan Rattler sitting at one and one. If it's anything like game one, you'll want to stay tuned and we will be back to St. Catharines to tee up game number two of today after this short break. Most of our clients who come through our door and who are suffering from mental illness, they're feeling a sense of despair and a longing for help. Often, insurance companies are denying disability claims on the basis that there's insufficient medical evidence. We've represented hundreds of clients who suffer from anxiety or depression. We fight for our clients' right to receive the compensation they deserve. If you've been denied long-term disability, don't give up. We can help. Your long-term disability firm, Coltac Law. to rep your CEBL pride, Canada. Exclusive New Era merchandise is now available on CEBL.ca. Buy your favorite hats, replica jerseys, t-shirts, hoodies, and more. Welcome to our game. Rattlers fans, right now you can get 12% off 2021 season tickets by placing your $50 deposit before August 9th, 2020. Visit therattlers.ca and take advantage of this exclusive Summer Series offer. Welcome to a new basketball experience. Nighthawks fans, right now you can get 12% off 2021 season tickets by placing your $50 deposit before August 9th, 2020. Visit thenighthawks.ca and take advantage of this exclusive Summer Series offer. Welcome to a new basketball experience. You're watching the CEBL Summer Series live on CBC Chem and CBC Sports.ca. You're listening on CJOY 1416 Guelph. We're joined now by Amy Otterberg. Amy? Thanks, Jason. Something to keep in mind for this matchup is remembering the very demanding schedule that this summer series requires. And that means that both team, every team has to play at least one back-to-back, -back, but that also means every team gets at least a two-day break, if you will. Now, why that's relevant for this is both teams are coming into this game on a two off of a two-day break. So I talked to representatives from both Saskatchewan and Guelph and asked how they've spent their off days. And Saskatchewan, they've had a lot of team-led recovery film, ice, Guelph, a lot of the same stuff, but local head coach Charles Kissy took advantage of that and he had a, a yoga session at a local park. I'm anticipating a lot of freshness off this opening tip. Back to you guys. Thank you, Amy. We should have stretched out ourselves before that game number one, which was absolutely outstanding and we're in for more of the same here in this one between the Guelph Nighthawks who are sitting at two and one in this summer series and the Rattlers who are sitting at one and one and Coach Kissy, which was uh, mentioned previously by Amy Otterbert, will be heading over for a little interview with Amy in just a few seconds here, but taking a look at the format, it's a six round ro round robin game in a single elimination quarterfinals, big for any team who can get one of the top two spots and get a bye heading into the semis. And then you have the championship semifinals, as mentioned, leading into the finals, which will be next weekend, a condon condensed summer series to be sure. And Amy is now joined by local fan favorite, Coach Kissy. Coach, really quick, I'm gonna start I'm gonna start off by asking about your bench because in the first three games they're averaging 39 points per game. So talk a bit about their ability to come up and put some points on the board. You know what? Again, we've been saying it all tournament. I mean our, our team is 
um, loaded with talent, but but it's 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 been a by committee type thing, and so everyone's ready to play. Uh, and when your number gets called, you got to be ready to go, and they've done that so far. So far, but let's talk about this one. You guys match Saskatchewan in size pretty well, right? You match up well. What's going to be the biggest key to take this win? There's a lot. I mean, I think rebounding will definitely be one. Um, contesting the three-point line will definitely be one, but really taking care of the paint. You know, I'm hopeful that today our guys got the energy to, to, to really get back in transition defense and, and take care of the paint and the glass at the same time. No excuses. I heard there was an awesome yoga session. Yeah, you know, we're, we're trying to take care of the bodies. Uh, Coach, we appreciate your time. We'll go back to you. Shout out to ha uh, Hannah DeGenis. Thank you, Amy. Joe, we got some keys to the game to look at for both sides, and let's start it up with the Saskatchewan Rattlers. Well, I think a big part of Saskatchewan is the gang rebounding on both ends. They Because their size is so similar all the way across, I think that's a huge part. They have to impose their pace in transition. They want to run. They want to push it. So and Guelph's going to do everything they can to stop them. And in the half court, they got to execute. The other night where I thought when the game got down to crunch time, I thought uh, where they lost with Fraser Valley was maybe they just, they just didn't execute down the stretch. And that'll, that's just coming from more games under their belt. And then how about the Guelph Nighthawks? Joe, what do you see with them? Well, I, I think Guelph has to win the battle of the backcourt. I think Kimball McKenzie and Giles Jarvis got a little bit of experience under their belt, and I think that I'm waiting for them to really jump up. And they got to control the pace with defense. Pace and tempo is so important to Guelph, and they got to limit the turnovers. They can't allow fast break baskets. And then Tredarius McCullum has to be involved. I thought from game one to game two, that was their biggest jump as a team. They got him involved, and I think that's just an evolving as we go through the series. Trey Darius McCollum spent some time with the Windy City Bulls, one of the uh, a number of G League participants here in the CEBL summer series. And we are about two and a half minutes to tip off. Again, game number one was just outstanding. And we've seen an increase in compete level as the summer series has progressed and taken a look at the starting lineups, you got Kevin Bracey Davis, who's logged the most minutes for the Rattlers in this one, Denzel Taylor, Negus Webster Cham, Kemi Ose, and Chris Joseph. A lot of Quebec talent on this Rattlers squad. While on the Gulf side, Marcus Anderson, Jonathan Arlid, Shadarius, and Colin Jabari Craig, and Kimball McKenzie, Marcus Anderson, the U Sports graduate in the starting five, and he's three and a whole lot of defense as well. Oh my God, you know what? And, and for Saskatchewan, Rashawn Brown is gonna give them some U-Sport product there too. So we've got two of the better U-Sport players in the country playing here tonight. Yeah, an underlying underlying uh, storyline for sure here. And uh, just had a little hello with the officials here who will be doing the game here this evening from the Meridian Center. Chris Delaney, Jason Steele, and Tony Turnbull taking care of the whistles that don't whistle. Again, we use the electronic whistles here that have worked out very, very well, even though these officials just got a hold of them about a week before the, the summer series, which has a number of different COVID-related things in mind in order to keep everybody healthy. And one of them is wiping down these game balls consistently. And a reminder that the official game ball of the CEBL is Spalding. Get your new CEBL official replica ball today. And you can do that by visiting CEBL.ca. Between the referees, Jason, you and me, and the ball, Barbara would do just fine around here, eh? <laughs> I just realized that. <laughs> We, uh, it will be uh, um, one that will, you'll see a lot of uh, reflection of lights in this one. We apologize in advance. You may want to keep your uh, sunglasses on there at home. And for those not watching, I want to welcome you in on the CEBL radio network. Today's game on CJOY 1460 in Guelph. The Royal City. We appreciate you tuning in. Hopefully you're uh, enjoying your Friday barbecue maybe in your backyard. It's a beautiful day out there. This is the best place to spend your long weekend. Just pop in, pop out, watch a couple games. Absolutely. 
Let's start this one off here. Watch this Guelph lineup. They went big. Jabari Gregg, Jonathan Arledge. I, I think last time they went big, they started this group. I could see them turning out and starting to play some zone right off the bat just because of their size. Yeah, after Kibble McKenzie starting point guard at 6'2", you got 6'9", 6'3", 6'7", and 6'10". The Rattlers don't have a lot of size past 6'7", but man, do they got a number of guys floating around the 6'6 mark. Yeah, but that 6'6", 6'7", means that you can switch on everything, you can give help. And Kemi Ose at 6'1", holds his ground. It is thick and a, a veteran. This is a, a tough task because this has been Saskatchewan's strength that they've got all this parity and the, uh, that they can switch and, and, and it helps their defense tremendously. They built them different in North Montreal against Dort, Kemi Ose, a number of guys coming out of North Montreal. Yeah, you can't talk about Montreal in this game and not mention Chris Joseph. I was waiting for you to jump in, coach. Syracuse product. Absolutely, and, and proud uh, of Montreal every time he gets a chance to talk about it. The entire Joseph family. And it's Kimball McKenzie with the Rocks starting it up for the Nighthawks. McKenzie growing out the long walks in this one a little bit. Anderson, corner three, no good. And a foul called in the early going against Jonathan Arledge. And that was great boxing out by Saskatchewan. They got a body on him and forced him in a situation where he wasn't comfortable. First time I saw Kimball McKenzie as about a 15-year-old, he had curly, long locks flying up and down the floor. Now a pro overseas in Spain and running the point for the Nighthawks and doing a great job of it. Nice defense there by Jabari Craig. Ose battles through Anderson and Anderson looks like he'll be called for the foul. And one of the things we said, nice screen, Denzel Taylor is as physical a player as we have in this series. He sets great screens, he box out, he doesn't get noticed as much, but he is a physical presence. And that's the aforementioned Chris Joseph with the rock, a veteran for this Sask team. Finish is good, lefty finger roll Chris Joseph. Tough finish, good defense there. Getting Chris Joseph established, he got hurt last game, hurt his quadricep. Oh, Kimball McKenzie pull up Moneyball. We got ourselves a 5-0 game here for the Nighthawks. Kemi Ose with the ball getting bothered by Anderson. Runs off the screen, still at the perimeter. Four on the shot clock. Skip pass. Chris Joseph has to launch it. Front rim and out. A correction on the score, and I thought it was. It's 3-2. Count that 5-2. Jonathan Arledge transition layup is good. Great reward for good, solid defense there. A quick run out, layup, big man running the floor. Osei, once again, with the ball, pull up three because he was given lots of room that dared him to shoot it, and he misses back the other way. Kimball McKenzie working that ball off the hardwood. Arledge feeds it down to Craig, a little out of his reach, out of bounds. So what you see Guelph doing real early is they've used this drag play, the double drag, the two bigs, but really what they want is high-low. You're gonna, if you're gonna front our guy, we're gonna go to the high post and drop it in. If you're gonna play behind, we're just gonna bury you. They're gonna use their size. Kevin Bracey Davis, bothered by McCallum, goes out of bounds, but the Rattlers will get it back. 18 on the shot clock, A dollar fifty-four gone in the opening quarter here. Inbound, Ose up top, Chris Joseph. Syracuse product. Four years for the Orange. Great pump fake and a drop off, but Jonathan Arledge swats it away. McKenzie, coast to coast. Craig can't control it. He ends up getting the ball. Kick out three is good. Arledge from downtown. Arledge starts the play. Arledge finishes the play. Gets a lot of confidence on the defense with the block and then runs the floor, gets himself in a position to score. Ose got wiped out by Arledge. Two quick fouls on Jonathan Arledge here. Just one, sorry, 226 in the first quarter. 
Yeah, you know, that hurts. For the he's night such office. a weapon. You don't want, you know, it, it hurts Guelph's rotation right now. 8-2, the Guelph Nighthawks with an early six-point lead. First off the bench for Guelph is Tyrell Green, Toronto native out of the University of Nevada, his third year pro. And had a real good series, played very well the first two games. And Rashawn Brown, the U Sports product, called for the travel. Good defense, hand on the ball. He tripped them up, called for too many steps. Tyrell Green inbounds it to Kimball McKenzie. Nighthawks looking comfortable out here. McKenzie with the rock, fires it top of the three. McCallum, no good. Defensive rebound, Negus Webster Chan. He gets it to Brown. Brown crosses over on McKenzie. McKenzie cuts him off. Negus Webster Chan on top of the Ward One Studios logo. Webster Chan, a little pocket pass to Joseph. He finds Brown, extra pass into the corner. Three ball is good. Some great ball movement ending with a Bracey Davis three. Yeah, and good ball fakes too in that. Moved the defense, created a nice closeout, got a good shooter in the corner. Kimball McKenzie, that pass was swallowed up but could not get the layup to go, so it was a easy two from Tyrell Green. Joseph transition three is no good. Passing by the Nighthawks, Jabari Craig has not had the soft hands yet in this one. Yeah, and, and also the thing with Jabari too is when they use Jabari to set that high ball screen, he's not a threat to pick and pop. So it changes the defense up a little bit. There's more help coming for Saskatchewan where Jonathan Arledge sets the ball screen. Now you've got to defend it differently because now he's an opportunity to pick and pop. 10-5, Guelph Nighthawks up five here. 3-39 gone here in the first quarter. Sean Brown. Nice play, it's Chris Joseph with another basket. And that's because this lineup allows you to go five out and spread the floor, and therefore it's harder for help to come on that when the ball's at the top of the key like that. Kimball McKenzie, no good. Rashawn Brown, defensive rebound. Bracey Davis now gets cut off by McCallum to go back up top. Chris Joseph, he's had it going offensively and he pulls a three. Why not? Chris Joseph has seven points in the early going. We are tied at 10. And great recognition by Chris. He saw the matchup on him. Last time he made the cut backdoor cut, now he ends up with the open three. This week, the CEBL has been trending across Canada. You can join the conversation on all of our social media platforms. Simply use the hashtag OurGame. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. It's been on fire with the CEBL thus far. You can keep us going, hashtag OurGame. We're tied at 10 here. Just over four minutes gone in the first quarter. Game number 12 of the CEBL Summer Series. Jamal Reynolds in the game to Miles Charvis, another U Sports product. Tate to Green. Tate gets it back, gets to the free throw line, but Rashawn Brown picks his pocket back the other way. Brown, two, and they called the foul on Miles Charvis. I didn't see any contact. Yeah, and Coach Kissy's a little bit concerned of where it came from. But it was great defense. Let's talk about the defense on that. I thought Negus Webster Chan did a great job of playing, and Brown came over looking for the little bit of help. Good defense, another run out. Each team has scored two good run outs on defensive uh, solid possessions. Brown at the line looking for the three point play. He cashes it. That makes it 13 to 10 for the Saskatchewan Rattlers. They are wearing the home whites today with green and wheat trim. Guelph Nighthawks with the royal blue jerseys and it's Tyrell Green from downtown. We're tied at 13 once again. Tyrell shoot almost 50% from the three and about 70% from the field. He's had a great series. He's physical and he's shown he can knock down that shot. Oh, Gracie Davis got bothered on the shot, didn't get to go. Shane Asiande 
offensive rebound because that's what he does. But stepping in for the INT, Joel Friesen, he goes the other way, gets tripped up. He will head to the charity stripe to shoot two. Kevin Bracey Davis called for the foul. And we will have our first media timeout of the first quarter, just over the midway point of the opening 10 minutes. You are watching the CEBL Summer Series live on CBC Gem and cbcsports.ca. And of course, you're listening on CJOY 1460 in Guelph. Most of our clients who come through our door and who are suffering from mental illness, they're feeling a sense of despair and a longing for help. Often, insurance companies are denying disability claims on the basis that there's insufficient medical evidence. We've represented hundreds of clients who suffer from anxiety or depression. We fight for our clients' right to receive the compensation they deserve. If you've been denied long-term disability, don't give up. We can help. Your long-term disability firm, Kotak Law. Time to rep your CEBL pride, Canada. Exclusive New Era merchandise is now available on CEBL.ca. Buy your favorite hats, replica jerseys, t-shirts, hoodies, and more. Welcome to our game. Rattlers fans, right now you can get 12% off 2021 season tickets by placing your $50 deposit before August 9th, 2020. Well, welcome back to the Meridian Center. Home to the 2021 Kansas Summer Games. You got the Nighthawks taking on the defending CEBL champion, Saskatchewan Rattlers. Joel Friesen at the line. A lefty hits the first to put the Nighthawks back up 14-13 here, just over the midway point of the opening quarter. We got some originals out here. We got two original Rattlers, Anigas Webster Chan and Ashien and, and, and Shane. Two former Fraser Valley Bandits in Tate and Joel Friesen. Good point. Friesen was the first ever pick in the CBL draft. Sean Brown. A little U Sport on U Sport here. Rashawn Brown working on Miles Charvis. Brown pull up three. Almost got the roll. Shane Osiende. His second offensive rebound of the game, and it's Brown taking it hard to the hole. He tucked it like a running back, could not finish. He'll go to the line to shoot two. Now, Shane Asiende and Jordan Baker competed throughout their entire careers, and they play the same way. They play the same way. Shane has always got his hands on the ball, always going for rebounds, keeps balls alive. Brown hits the first. Cutting the lead to one, 15-14. And he misses the second. Joel Friesen comes down with the defensive rebound. 4.20 to go here in the first quarter. Charvis, he finds Jamal Reynolds. He passes it right back to Charvis on the handoff. Charvis now working on Oceande. Got him dancing. Oh. High off of glass, Miles Charvis for two. Yeah, big time scoop going left. Had to extend it, had no choice on that. And that was over Jelaine Price. Sean Brown kicks it out. Bracey Davis from downtown. Big time shot tied at 17. He's a real good corner three point shooter. He likes to get himself in that corner on all rotations. Reynolds, oh, he took it hard to the hole. Another tough finish. The Nighthawks making it look easy. Yeah, good solid slasher his whole career. He had that step and he took it on Negus. Into the post, Oseande takes it, can't get it to go. Three offensive rebounds, and they get it back off the out of bounds. In our day, we call those Moses Malone yes. uh, rebounds. Still off the stat sheet. 
Absolutely. But Shane likes to come back to his left. Had an opportunity to score there with the right, but he came back to his left. But he's just fearless on the offensive boards. The veteran Olu Famuthimi, who started the majority of games for the Nighthawks last year, coming off the bench, checks in. Jabari Craig coming back in now as well. Bracey Davis, he has it going. Layup while getting hacked. Another opportunity at a three-point play for the defending champs. Great execution on the baseline out of bounds. They were real patient with it, created the lane, and he just took it all the way to the basket. Oh, he rattles it out. Bracey Davis played in Greece, Finland, and Germany over the last couple of years. Oh, loose ball, and it's the Rattlers that come up with it. Brown goes behind the back over midcourt. Kick out corner, Bracey Davis drives baseline, invites the contact, no whistle, misses the layup. All kinds of contact down low. Osiyande and Jamal Reynolds just battling, and it's Osiyande cleaning up the mess. It's been the theme for Saskatchewan is just get, get second chance opportunities by getting to the boards. Freezing down low to Craig. 21-19, Sask in the lead. Tough pass to Friesen. Foul call. The reminder, you can pick up the latest gear from your favorite team exclusively from New Era, the official merchandise partner of the CEBL and its seven teams across Canada. You can visit cebl.ca and click shop, no matter who your favorite team is, or you don't have to pick a favorite team. You can just go and grab something from each team. No one will call you out on that. You don't have to be a band, the bandwagon fans. You don't have to worry about that. Just say you like the jerseys, you like the colors, you want to support the league. You know, we go back and revisit the second foul by Jonathan Arledge, how it hurts the rotation early in the game. You have a set rotation, you've got planned, and all of a sudden now it just took Guelph out of sync a little bit. Terrell Tate with the ball, running off the Craig screen. Tate, free throw line, jumper, front rim, no good. And it's the Rattlers once again controlling the boards. Long rebound for Oseyande. They swing it around. Kemi Ose gets it to Bracey Davis. Why not? Bracey Davis is on fire from downtown. 24-19 for the champs. And you could just sense Jabari Craig just didn't want to go all the way out there. It's a tough matchup for him in this situation. McCallum pops, skipping a jump into the lane. No good. And the Rattlers again on the run. Jelaine Price picked off Anderson with the steal. Trey Darius McCallum the other way for a quick two to cut the lead to three. Yeah, tough turnover. Risk and reward situation there. All you had to do is move the basketball, get out of the out of a big into a better ball handler's hands. All of a sudden it's two points the other way. Bracey Davis has got the hot hand right now. Bracey Davis hard dribble into the lane, finds Osiande. Back down, Osiande in the post, drop off. Price got the roll. We are back and forth with 106 left. 26-21, Sask in the lead. A lot of scoring and a lot of baskets going on right now, Joe. Yeah, but it's all second chance baskets, I think. Like, Osiende getting his hands there. You got a guy like Price dive into the basket. I think those that's been the key for Saskatchewan. Guelph's playing very well defensively on the first shot. It's the second opportunity that, be, uh, that Saskatchewan will be able to keep it alive. And I think they, that Saskatchewan's done a good job of getting back on defense and building their defense with that length. The Nighthawks, obviously, as you mentioned, went big in the starting five with the early foul trouble on Jonathan Arledge. Really had a, not only a change in rotation, you're kind of changing your game plan as well. Yeah, and, and I thought they were going to start big and go zone, but they, they surprised me. They came out and they big and went man. And the first foul was just a, a mismatch, but the second one was just a bad decision. And you as a player, we all I like to tell players, make your first foul memorable, because you don't want to get them in bunches. So if your first foul's memorable, you'll hold off on, on it, and, and I think it helps. Like I, I think that's a huge part, because now the rotation's set, some coaches won't play it with two in the first half. Yeah. So it really affects a lot of what Guelph wanted to do. 
Reminder, we play FIBA rules, so five fouls and you're out. And as we saw in the last game, technical foul, foul counts towards your personal foul total. So anytime you get yourself into foul trouble, and if you're a little upset, pick up a tech a little bit later. Before you know it, you can have four fouls and you're sitting for the majority of the game. Yeah. Told you Kevin Bracey Davis was hot. 11 points, four of seven shooting, while Chris Joseph still with seven on three of five. Kimmel McKenzie to Tradarius McCollum. Nice move to the lane. The import's getting it done today. McCallum, two off glass. Look at Jonathan, sorry. Marcus Anderson. Marcus Anderson. Not Jonathan Arledge, saw the A. But Marcus John Anderson. But Jonathan active. Arledge back in the game with two fouls. So, you know, I said some coaches won't play guys with two and some will. 26-23, the Rattlers in the lead. And you can see the Nighthawks defense has picked up. Taylor gets it back to Osei. Taylor handoff. Robinson Opong dribbles it off the foot of the defender. Taylor, they got to shoot it. Instead, it's stolen by Famutimi. Wow. They went from a 24 second shot clock violation to a turnover on the pass from Famutimi to Kimball McKenzie. And just like that, Joe, they lose their opportunity at the possession at the end of this quarter. Only 20 seconds left. The Rattlers have the ball. And they got last possession and they get the ball to start the next yeah. quarter. But what they've got to do is with this lineup, Chris Joseph's got to get his touches. So oh. I think in this case, Chris, Chris was better as a receiver. You got to find Chris because he's your best threat with this lineup. Ose, five seconds on the clock. Kemi Ose loves the late clock time. Misses the jumper. Kimmel McKenzie did a good job almost getting it there. 26-23, we'll be back live on CBC Sports, CBC Gem, and CJ O-Y Club. What is 100 years? In 1920, Earhart Cook turned a passion for headwear into the new era cap company in Buffalo, New York. But everyone was making this kind of hat. So we came up with the big idea to make the best caps for the biggest sport. But something wasn't quite right. We wanted to show the logos with pride. And just like that, the iconic 5950 was born, changing the baseball cap forever. For the first time, the caps the pros wore on the field were officially sold in stores. And then something unique happened. Spike Lee called, the Spike Lee, and asked to have a red Yankees cap to match his jacket. We asked Major League Baseball, and they said, we had a chance to be disruptive. Spike's red cap launched sports headwear into a wider culture. Hip hop made the staple. Creators made it their own. Colors, fabrics, patterns. It was more than just your favorite team. And a gold sticker on the visor became as iconic as the cap itself. And those four numbers, we think it's an original production number. We don't know for sure, but we love them. From courtside to Crenshaw, from the 50 to 5th, it shouted that this is who you were, what you repped, and where you lived. The world saw it and wanted it. Where were we? Staying true to our roots. Fans of all sports became fans of us. People liked what we were doing, so our brand grew, and we became more than just a cat. That's 100 years. We thank you. Enjoy what comes next. Back live to the Meridian Center. Kemi Osei with the Rock as we start off the second quarter, a three-point lead. Currently for the Rattlers. Arledge, McKenzie. Kimball McKenzie. Getting bothered by a number of Rattlers. Fires it off to Arledge. They get it into the corner. Three, Trey Darius McCallum, no good. The Rattlers battling each other for the rebound. They come the other way. 
A good series there, but it's a lot more difficult to guard that high ball screen when Arledge is on the floor because he's at that threat again, and their spacing was better. We'll say can't get the roll, and it's going to stay with the Rattlers. They have been active on the glass, Joe. So that's not an offensive rebound, but the result's the same. Yep. Because of the pressure that Denzel put on the ball and on Nighthawks getting it back, actually. So we were there was a foul. Ooh, Anderson got away with I think step there. You heard the Rattlers coaching staff asking about that. Kimmel and Kenzie gets it back, turns the corner, fires it out. Famutimi is pure from range. And, and that's what Kimball's real good at, probing that middle. He knows where the help's coming. And so wherever it came from, he's looking for that guy to get the ball there. And here you got Ola with a nice big shot. We're tied at 26. Osei, a little give and go with Taylor. Osei gets it back and gets the roll thanks to a nice arc on the jumper. Got to love those four bounce rim rolls, eh? <laughs> hey, man, you get it up high enough, you give yourself a chance, right? Found with Jimmy. To McKenzie, McKenzie triggers it just a little bit short, and the slap of the ball is the big mitts of Kemi Ose on the defensive rebound. That is a moving screen on Denzel Taylor. And you find those 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 situations are more than just moving screens; those are turnovers. A reminder that Coventry is the official transportation partner of the CEBL Summer Series. Last game, they took a very happy Edmonton Stingers squad back to the team hotel and probably not so happy Niagara Riverline squad, and that was an outstanding game. If you have a chance to go back and watch it, take a look. And speaking of taking a look, Olu Famatimi has it going from downtown, 29-28. The Nighthawks now up by one. And again, Kimball McKenzie recognizes the hot hand, gets there, had an easy two, I thought, had a chance at a two, but found Olo in the corner. Chris Joseph trying to uh, get the stroke back. He had it going early, but hasn't gotten his shot up as of late. McKenzie, stop and go, take off glass, draws iron. Watch Guelph's transition, eh? They miss the shot, they get back, they build their defense. They're real, it's really important them not to give up the transition baskets. Negus Webster Chan, he suckered in McKenzie on that. So what happens, Jason, on situations like that, when you get caught chasing, you're the trail guy. So you're, Negus is a shooter, shooting like 10 of 15 threes in this series. He stops on a dime, and Kimball just too close. And it's just a veteran move on his part. Called that one a long two. Webster Chan's foot was on the line, so he's shooting two from the stripe. Hits the first, tying the game at 29. Two minutes and 46 seconds here into the second quarter. Hmm. One ref said they were shooting two. Well, how about the fact that he's shooting, like you've got to guard him, he's shooting 67% from the three in this series. Well, he shot. I, um, all right, I'm pretty sure the official said they were shooting two. He shot three, he hit two of them. We move on. Sask with a 30 to 29 lead here as the two teams go back and forth. Arledge hasn't been able to get it going offensively because of the foul trouble. He misses the jumper in the lane, but he gets hacked going to the charity stripe shooting two. Yeah, I just love it when he goes inside the post. I think he changes their team up a lot when he does that. A reminder, as part of the CEBL social justice work, you will hear players, coaches, and staff speak out against racism throughout the summer series. Racism is not our game. It's featured at each baseline and on the back of the warm-up shirts for each team as a reminder of the work we all need to do for equality in Canada. Game is tied at 30. 
And Arledge gets the Nighthawks back into the lead. Gracie Davis was red hot in the first quarter. Of course, he gets the layup to go to keep it rolling for Gracie Davis. Yeah, and he didn't look, he was getting, he may have been fouled that, but he didn't complain. He just kept, he played right through the action. Offensive foul called on the screen. Yeah, and Arledge gets his third, just completely taking himself out of the game here in the first half. Well, head coach Charles Kissy is going to have to uh, find a different way to execute his game plan with his big man out of the game, one of his big men out of the game. Gracie Davis looks down low, but it's poked away by McCallum. Olu Famatimi gets it ahead. Johnson gets it back. Corey Johnson over to Anderson. Anderson, Kibble McKenzie. McKenzie blocked by O.C. Yande, but he made contact on the body, leading to two free throws. Great kick out, reversal, good spacing, leaves the lanes. When you can move the basketball from side to side, good things happen. Let's check in with Amy Otterbird. Amy? Yeah, great story with Kimball McKenzie and Charles Kissy. Kimball's older brother, Nolan, actually played for Charles at Brock University down here in St. Catharines. And so how he acquired Kimball, well, they were both in Vegas last summer for the Summer League, the NBA Summer League, where Charles was with the Raptors. And Kimball was there for a showcase playing um, through his agent. And while they didn't meet, they were texting. And so Charles was able to acquire Kimball and get him out. We all know he kind of became a bit of a fan favorite in terms of his energy that he brought. And I asked Kimball, was, was Charles, everything that Nolan told you, and Kimball with the last said, don't tell coach this, but we didn't run quite as many 17s as I was told. Guys. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. We're tied at 32 here. And it's Shane Osayande just stuffing the stat sheet, misses his first, cleans up his second. So another offensive rebound and a two. And Shane's not concerned about field goal percentage. He just wants those boards, and he just goes and gets it after every shot. Going after that league rebounding record. Olufamitivi, drive, kick. Anderson, drive, kick. McKenzie, that was pure the minute it came off his fingertips. Three ball, and it's Guelph up one. Yeah, Guelph's got great flow in their half-court offense right now. They're moving the basketball, and they're finding guys. Nobody's searching for their shot, but rather they're using their offense to get them their shot. Olu Famatini pokes it away and then saves it. McKenzie gets it ahead. McCallum fire out. Corey Johnson off his hands out of bounds. The Rattlers will get it back. Yeah, Corey Johnson just rushed down there, but I think when Corey hits his first three, he's just going to relax, and I think they're going to come. Corey played in Leicester in the BBL last year for a bit, and local product or with family roots in the St. Catharines area, Dan Rutledge was their play-by-play -play analyst over there, or their color, sorry, their play-by-play -play guy. British basketball league. Nighthawks have been active defensively, getting their hands into the passing lanes. Another deflection there, 17 on the shot clock, 5.09 to go here in the first half, 35-34, Guelph in the lead. Gracie Davis for the Rattlers has it poked away. Olu Famatini once again coming up with it. Kimball McKenzie hard to the hole. He got tripped up down low it looked like and was blocked on the weak side. Help Chris Joseph wide open three. Rushed it just a little bit. Misses it. Rattlers another offensive rebound. Osei picked up his dribble. Needs to get bailed out. Negus Webster Chan corner three no good. Famatini great box out defensive rebound. Credit to Guelph to stick with the possession there. Played real well after, they've had, after two offensive rebounds, stayed with it. 4.30 to go here in the second quarter. It has been a back and forth affair. The two teams trading the lead throughout the first half. Kimball McKenzie with four on the shot clock. Negus Webster Chan on him. McKenzie invites the contact, can't get the layup to go. Negus Webster Chan to Chris Joseph. Hand back to Webster Chan, the Scarborough native. Gets it over to Jelaine Price. Kemi Osei now looking for Price on the roll. Instead, gets it to Bracey Davis. No good from downtown. He's cooled off. 
Saskatchewan's got a lot of length on defense here. And right now settling with, with the size advantage, I think on the floor, settling for a lot of threes. Miles Charvis. Johnson set the screen, then ran off one of his own. Charvis gets around Joseph, lays it up off of glass. 3.39 to go. It's a three-point lead. And we will be back to Meridian Center after a short break. Well, when I was younger in high school, I was a pretty good athlete. Went to the provincial championships in most sports like volleyball, track, basketball, and of course, the goalie. But lately, I've been going up the stairs like Fred Sanford. That's why I use Inflamex. Remember, two M's, two X's. Inflamex is formulated to relieve joint pain, helps address pain and inflammation at the cellular level, and is GMO-free and allergen-free. I'm doing better with a little help from my friends at Bell Lifestyle Products. So you can do the things that you do best. Oh, yeah. Spend two nights in Ottawa and get $100 spending money on us. Dinner and drinks, it's on us. Or outdoor fun, it's on us. So relax, it's on us. Spend two nights and get $100. A mark of legacy, a mark of our game. Spalding is the official basketball partner of the CEBL. Get your replica CEBL game ball now at CEBL.ca and take our game to your courts. Most of our clients who come through our door and who are suffering from mental illness, they're feeling a sense of despair and a longing for help. Often, insurance companies are denying disability claims on the basis that there's insufficient medical evidence. We've represented hundreds of clients who suffer from anxiety or depression. We fight for our clients' right to receive the compensation they deserve. If you've been denied long-term disability, don't give up. We can help. Your long-term disability firm, Kotak Law. These two teams have been trading off the leads. Thank you for joining us here. Once again, we are on cbcsports.ca, CBC Gem, and on the CEBL radio network, CJOY 1460 in Guelph for this one. You are listening and watching to the CEBL Summer Series, game number 12, Negus Webster Chan. Gets into the lane, no good. Jelaine Price can't get the offensive rebound. The Nighthawks push him the other way now. Charvis, Corey Johnson needs to see one go through. Can't get it to go. Tyrell Green, offensive rebound. Charvis once again with the rock. 10 on the shot clock. 3.06 to go here in the first half. Charvis back to Johnson. Push off, no call. Baseline jumper is good. It's a long two. A shooter's always confident. He thinks if I miss two or three in a row, there's no way I'm missing the next one. Really impressed by the fact that he took that shot. Sorry, I think they called that a three. Six point lead for Guelph. No. Anyways, we'll get that net back down to a two. 39-34. Sometimes I'm right, Joe. Like there, 24 second shot clock violation. You gotta love Guelph's defense at the ball. They're stopping the ball and they're able to extend themselves out a little bit. You know, Tyrell Green came out in the first quarter, had an impact. Olu's always gonna play defense. Uh, Sorry, and we talked about it before. The Nighthawks, their bench is on that side of the floor right now, communicating defensively all the time. Yeah, and they've just done a great job of on the ball defense. Look at that. You yes. called it again from downtown. Corey Johnson, he's got it going. He was brought in to be the sharpshooter, and Guelph is now up eight. So 42-34, 217 left here in the first half. And Joe, we were saying that it was the Rattlers who got hot. Kevin Bracey Davis, Chris Joseph, but no one else is really active offensively outside of Shane Osiande on the glass. The Nighthawks have really spread the love. And this is one of the factors we talked about the execution of, of, of Saskatchewan going down, and Guelph's made it a half court game on that end. They've stopped the transition. But how about shooter's mentality? How about Corey Johnson? Yeah. Like, you know, he hasn't it hasn't gone down for him, but all of a sudden he feels that he's taking good shots. He knows they're good shots. And then now the lid came off, and all of a sudden I think that really looks a lot bigger. But you can't just be a good shooter. You've got to have that mentality to cover to, and the confidence to do it. During this Rattlers timeout, let's join, be joined by Amy Otterberg. 
Thanks, Jason. A great story from Corey Johnson. You know, he played his college ball at Harvard, so he has an Ivy League degree in economics, but it was his recruiting process. Charles Kissy recruited him very heavy to Brock, but early on he told Coach that he wanted to play Division I basketball. And Coach Kissy, and I spoke to, to Corey earlier in the week, and he said, what he always remembers is Coach Kissy encouraged me to follow my passion and my dream. He didn't try to persuade me to stay home. He encouraged me to go to, high, to Harvard and study and follow my education and my athletic dreams. So he, think, he says it's such a full circle that now he gets to come back and still play for the coach that encouraged him so much. Guys. Thank you, Amy. And we've seen a number of different stories here of you know players going down south and returning back north of the border. But I mean, anytime you can go down and get yourself an Ivy League education at a place like Harvard, you're setting yourself up beyond just basketball because you know the people in the world that came out of Harvard, they're going to be able to give you that job once the basketball stops bouncing. And what a lot of people don't realize is that recruiting is about relationships. And even if you don't get the recruit, you can still build that relationship. Kemi Ose with the rock. Miles Charvis guarding him. Foul off the ball. Johnson called for the foul. Remember, you can support your local team and get the latest news, videos, and highlights through Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. You can follow the defending champions at SAS underscore Rattlers and the Guelph Nighthawks at G Nighthawks on all the social media platforms that the kids seem to be using. I don't know, I have a feeling like social media is going to be here for a while. Kai Williams, fresh off the bench and hits from downtown, the big man. And yeah, he's a veteran, so, and a, and a local product from Saskatchewan, but Jelaine did a nice job of making it, putting a, making a good pass right on time and on target. Oh, two of the vets going to work there. Olu Famutimi gets it past Williams for two. 44-37, the Nighthawks with the lead. A dollar 30 left in the first half for Sean Brown. Foul called on Famutimi, I believe. Well, Sean Brown gives them instant offense. He's the toughest, he's a tough guard to guard because he's so quick. And during that stretch, he had been on the bench. Uh, I think this is a good substitution to help them build their offense a little bit. Substitution on the Nighthawks side as well. Jamal Reynolds checking in for Olu Famatini. Brown. Oh, he lost Johnson in his dust, and Johnson had to trip him up. I think Brown is going to be shooting too because they are in the bonus. He does that better than anyone on the Saskatchewan team where he could just get by you there. And Coach Kissy turns around and gets Marcus Anderson up, and his main job will be that stop Brown from getting middle. You gotta give it to the Nighthawks, Joe. Like, they didn't have a lot going in that first quarter, but, I mean, just in general in the summer series, I've been most impressed with the Nighthawks. I don't want to say I counted them out coming into this one. I just didn't know what to expect, but I did know that they were going to compete at a high level every game, and they have been rewarded with their record thus far. And they play real good team defense, yes. and they grind and grind and grind, and they know their roles, and, and I think that's the success of this team. Guys know their roles. Guys come off the bench and, and perform. Charvis. Watched by Bracey Davis. Charvis. Crossover jumper, back rim, no good. 104 to go, the lead's at five. The Rattlers have a chance to make it a one possession game. Jose gets it to Price. Rashawn Brown thought about it. Williams, corner three. No good, but guess who comes down with it? Kemi Ose, he's like a fire hydrant out there the way he's built. Offensive rebound, then gets hacked, and he will get to the charity strike. You know, Coach Kiss is going to talk about like a great defensive performance only if we would have just did a better job of boxing out because that's the one area on this defense that is hurting them is the offensive rebound, the second chance opportunities. I feel like Kemi Ose would make you feel it every time you played him. You would end up with a shoulder in your chest and it wouldn't be dirty. It would just be, you know, you're in my way and I'm built like this, you're gonna get hit. 
Some guys give it, and some guys are willing to take it. And I think he's a little bit of both. A little bit of both, absolutely. Three-point lead now for the Nighthawks. The Rattlers looking to finish this one off with a strong defensive stand and then getting the rock back. Reynolds to McCallum. Miles Charvis gets into the lane, kicks out. Anderson back to Charvis. Unselfish basketball, but he misses the three. It's saved by Anderson. They get it back. Reynolds, sorry. That's Tradarius McCallum. No good. Should have followed his own shot, but instead, rebound goes the way of the Rattlers. Ooh, almost turned it into two, but Bracey Davis misses the layup. Now the Nighthawks can finish it out with the final possession, 12 on the clock. Yeah. Bad decision, time to score there for Bracey Davis. Charvis, five seconds to go. Off the Reynolds screen, he has Kai Williams on him. He's gonna try to launch it. No good, two decent defensive stands there. It's a three point lead at halftime for the Nighthawks, Joe. And you gotta like those veteran legs of Kai Williams. Had the mismatch, knew they were gonna run down the clock at him, and he did a real nice job of staying with it. And Amy Otterberg joined by Kimball McKenzie. Amy? Well, obviously, you guys did a great job. Out of the, very balanced attack. Nine guys and how, are scoring. How does that affect your offensive balance? Yeah, it's a good thing for us. I mean, I think we're a deep team, which is one of our biggest strengths. Uh, we got 12 guys who can really play. So, uh, yeah, I'm glad that a lot of guys are contributing. Those two quick fouls on Jonathan hurt your rotation early. In your opinion, how were you able to recover from that? Uh, like I said, our depth. Our depth is one of our biggest strengths, so I thought we just, you know, next guy up was ready to go, and uh, we, we recovered. So I think we could play a little better, but, you know, we're in a good spot. You said it, so i got to ask, how can you play a little bit better? Yeah, rebounding. Uh, we got to take care of the defensive glass. They're a big team, and they're, they're pretty physical, so we got to block out, and, and everyone's got a gang rebound. We appreciate your time, Kimball. Thanks. And we're going to go to break. We'll be right back for some halftime action. Okay, I've been working like three jobs. Probably why I never see ya. Probably why I never have time for the fake friends I won't be ya. Oh God, I've been running now. Up early when the sun is out. Not studying out my own soul, but those real ones, they coming out. Oh look, who's reaching out? Old friends wanna feature now. They don't work, so they need it free. Ooh, you reaching out from the west side of that old town, but there's no show. So I go down to the open mic, show love to the real ones they know now. Some of y'all don't know now. In a couple months, you're gonna find out. Been blowing up from the underground, and they stepping on a landmine now, and he knows my time now. Coming up, I'm on a climb now. Everybody kind of been bottom, but it's looking like they took a time out. Okay, Ooh. I'm working on a Wednesday, then up again the next day. So and so is popping, man. I skip him like he leg day. Kick it like I'm Pele. I never care what they say. Put myself on Spotify, so every day my payday. That realness, don't feel this, but I've been sick. That illness, I've been fresh like Will Smith since '94, man. I built this. Stressed out, X out. Missed calls from my ex now, but I'm staying focused. In the lab, baby, I don't need your cause or your text now. God say the boy blessed now. Who am I to say Rondo? And the way that I sell ticks, they've been calling me Rondo. 23 in my prondo. Finna ball like Lonzo. Go and tell everybody talking stage better be in that convo. Uh. It was a Saturday. Chris was a good dad. His water practices, not so much. Hey, Chris. Hey, Culligan. Got a water pitcher for the fam. Pretty safe, huh? Uh, well, basic water pitchers are passable. Whereas a collagen reverse osmosis system can reduce lead, arsenic, pesticide runoff. You realize these have filters? Chris, pour it out. It's not going fast enough. Just, just done with that. When your water's right, so is your world. I wrote that! Forty-four, forty-one. the Guelph Nighthawks with a three-point lead here at halftime. Coming up during the halftime break, got a number of different things for you. Yesterday in the CEBL, just taken care of by Sean Woodley and Javon Shepard. They'll take you through it. Amy and the Commish, they'll continue their series. Mike Morreale will be joined by Amy Otterbert. And then the visiting team head coach, Chad Jacobson, will talk about that first half with Amy. Keys to the game brought to you by, or sorry, halftime stats presented by Beck Chris and Keys to the game brought to you by Joe Rasso, who will join me as we return after a short break. Stay with us. We will be back to the Meridian Center on cbcsports.ca 
and you're listening on CJOY 1460 in Guelph. Welcome to PayWorks. We're payroll, HR, and time and absence management experts. So whether your business has thousands of employees or just one, let us show you how we're different. We're PayWorks, and we're doing business to business, person to person. A mark of legacy, a mark of our game. Spalding is the official basketball partner of the CEBL. Get your replica CEBL game ball now at cebl.ca and take our game to your courts. Most of our clients who come through our door and who are suffering from mental illness, they're feeling a sense of despair and a longing for help. Often, insurance companies are denying disability claims on the basis that there's insufficient medical evidence. We've represented hundreds of clients who suffer from anxiety or depression. We fight for our clients' right to receive the compensation they deserve. If you've been denied long-term disability, don't give up. We can help. Your long-term disability firm, Kotak Law. It's time to rep your CEBL pride, Canada. Exclusive New Era merchandise is now available on CEBL.ca. Buy your favorite hats, replica jerseys, t-shirts, hoodies, and more. Welcome to our game. Rattlers fans, right now you can get 12% off 2021 season tickets by placing your $50 deposit before August 9th, 2020. Visit therattlers.ca and take advantage of this exclusive Summer Series offer. Welcome to a new basketball experience. Nighthawks fans, right now you can get 12% off 2021 season tickets by placing your $50 deposit before August 9th, 2020. Visit thenighthawks.ca and take advantage of this exclusive Summer Series offer. Welcome to a new basketball experience. To game number 10 of the CEBL Summer Series between the 0-2 Ottawa Blackjacks and the undefeated Fraser Valley Bandits. Pierre Charles can't get it to go at the rim. Clausen with it. Little dump pass underneath to Capers who will jam it down. Out of comfortable positions. Oh! Jabs Newby tosses it up there for Tavarian Nix on the run. It's an alley-oop jam for Tavarian Nix. He's back in that 2-3 zone, so we'll see how, how Ottawa attacks this. Uh, they attack it beautifully, very quick passing. Kadugan underneath, Forte for the win, no good. Tapped around, rebound by Ottawa. And he falls to the ground. For Hannah Mescal, for the win. It's good, the Ottawa Blackjacks win 78 to 76 and close out a very tense Elam ending finish here and move to one and two while the Fraser Valley Bandits no longer the sole undefeated team. Let's build on what we did yesterday and let's have a good one. One, two, three. Four. Turn up one time on these boys. They're not ready. ready, ready. He's trying to get out of here. Make it count. Don't take no hit of your own. Yeah. Listen, man. Tonight is the night. Hey, family on three. One, two, three. Family. Yeah. Yeah. One, two, three. Stay here. Four, five, six. Family. Got an opportunity to play basketball. Take advantage of it. What is 100 years? In 1920, Earhart Cook turned a passion for headwear into the new era cap company in Buffalo, New York. But everyone was making this kind of hat. So we came up with the big idea to make the best caps for the biggest sport. But something wasn't quite right. We wanted to show the logos with pride. And just like that, the iconic 5950 was born, changing the baseball cap forever. For the first time, the caps the pros wore on the field were officially sold in stores. And then something unique happened. Spike Lee called, the Spike Lee, and asked to have a red Yankees cap to match his jacket. We asked Major League Baseball, and they said, we had a chance to be disruptive. Spike's red cap launched sports headwear into a wider culture. Hip hop made the staple. Creators made it their own. Colors, fabrics, patterns. 
it was more than just your favorite team. And a gold sticker on the visor became as iconic as the cap itself. And those four numbers, we think it's an original production number. We don't know for sure, but we love them. From courtside to Crenshaw, from the 50 to 5th, it shouted that this is who you were, what you repped, and where you lived. The world saw it and wanted it. Where were we? Staying true to our roots. Fans of all sports became fans of us. People liked what we were doing, so our brand grew, and we became more than just a cap. That's 100 years. We thank you. Enjoy what comes next. Welcome back inside the Meridian Center. A three-point lead for the Guelph Nighthawks. Both teams taking every second that they can. that situation there I think both teams needed a rest like sometimes at halftime lots of talking but sometimes you just need the rest so I think uh, it's a regroup for both teams and let's get going yeah I mean a lot of interesting th and it, you know the way the game started when you saw Bracey Davis and Chris Joseph getting it going for the Rattlers you thought maybe the Nighthawks were gonna be in some trouble here but it almost seemed like the game plan might have been, okay, those two are gonna get theirs, but make sure you keep everybody else in check. And outside of Shane Osayande, who got to work on the offensive glass, they were really able to limit really anybody. While on the Nighthawks side of things, as Amy had mentioned, a number of different players get in the scoring column. Nine guys scoring points in that first half for the Nighthawks. Yeah, and their bench has been very good all throughout this. And I think that their backcourt in particular played very, very well with good decision making in it. But almost a perfect half defensively for Guelph, it's not for the rebounds. Like that's the one area. A possession's not over until you secure the ball. And a reminder, I mean, they went big to start the game. Jonathan Arledge, two fouls in the first two and a half minutes, then picked up his third, and they were still able to come out of that first half with a three-point lead. They gotta be happy also. Uh, both these teams coming off a two-day break. So on one side, they'll probably be healthy, but will they have the gas, will they have the juice, will they have the legs? Yeah, I think the, I think that energy should be there. I think the legs should be there. And I think the other part of it, they're now got another game under their belt. They've been around a little bit longer. We're expecting teams to execute better as we go along throughout the series. Like the turnover should come down. But what I, what I, well, the other thing yeah. I liked about Guelph was, Guelph didn't go to the offensive board much because they were so worried about uh, Saskatchewan's transition. They just get back. Yeah, and, and you know another thing that we hadn't touched on was the fact that the Rattlers only played two games to this point. So they came out of the gates fairly strong and now really starting to find themselves as well. You mentioned Chris Joseph. He missed that first game, ended up getting to play, and then you said got banged up again. So they're really still trying to figure themselves out. The Nighthawks, again, have some continuity from last season, have added in a lot of similar types of players. They play for each other. They get after it defensively, as you mentioned, throughout that first half. And I think that's what we've seen. And again, a reminder, such a condensed summer series, the Nighthawks, if they win this game, if they can hold on, they're in three and one. That is a very, very good spot to go into midway through this summer series. And I congratulate Coach Kissy and his staff because I think of all the teams, their team has defined roles very, very well. And they did it earlier than the third game. So I think they've done a great job of it. 
and I think that's helped them tremendously. And right now, Amy Otterbert is joined by the Saskatchewan Rattlers head coach, Chad Jacobson. Amy? Thank you, Jason. Coach, in that first half, Guelph had 13 assists on 16 made field goals, so how do you disrupt that ball movement a bit? Yeah, we just didn't do a very good job of staying in front of the ball. We allowed them to get into the paint off dribble penetration. Now they have easy draw and kick situations, and you know they're just getting wide open catch and shoot threes, and that's why they're shooting at such a high clip. So we got to do a better job staying in front of the ball. You've only you've played one less game than everybody else when you woke up this morning. So regardless of the score, have you noticed your team improving on the court as every quarter goes by? I think so. Yeah, I think I think we're getting better every time we're out here. I mean, this this last half wasn't our best half, and. Uh, the guys know that, uh, but here we are down three points, so and we just got to fight back here, possession by possession, and, and I think we'll be okay. All right, we appreciate your time. Good luck in the second half. Thank we'll you. Back to you guys. Well, it looks like Chad Jacobson is going to thank you, by the way, Amy. I was just taken back because we have a, a, a mesh malfunction, but in the meantime, let's look at our keys of the game one more time, Joe, starting up with the Rattlers. Well, we said they had the gang rebound, and they certainly did. It, the rebounding kept them in the game on the offensive end, and they're doing a good job on the defense end. Imposed their pace and transition. Like, they've got to, they're, they're slowing down. They're not doing as good a job as this as they did. In the first quarter, I thought they were outstanding. And then their half-court execution. This is an area they have to grow. And as Coach Jacobson said, they think they're getting better every half, but that's an area right now that Guelph is making them grind. And now, how about the Guelph Nighthawks? Well, I think that battle of the backcourt, I like the confidence of the Nighthawks. I think, you know, Kimball McKenzie and Miles Jarvis have both done good job decision making. And I think they've done a good job there. They control the pace with their defense. They have few turnovers. They've done a real good job of doing that. And they're getting back. Sometimes you won't see Guelph even go for an offensive board. They just get back. And establishing Tradarius uh, McCollum. He's doing a good job on both ends, but I like his ability on the offensive end, especially when he's out there with Jonathan Arledge, because he gives you another factor. He can, he can post up and he can shoot the three. And I just thought he, and I just think that's an area that they can get better, a team that's very good right now can get better at. And halftime stats presented by Bet Chris. And if you're taking a look at things here, Joe, Rebounds, I mean, the 22 to 15 rebounding uh, advantage there. That's Shane Osiande getting to work on the glass while the Nighthawks really sharing the rock. And it's not a surprise that their field goal percentage is so high because of the fact that they have that many assists. Yeah, and you look at that stat, rebound stat tells you we've got a three point game and not a 13 point game. Because that, that, that was all the second possessions there that they've done. And I think that's really important. And the other part of it was that fast start. You know, Chris Joseph scores seven points in three possessions and does and has to, doesn't have a real good look after that the, the last score. So Guelph's doing a real good job. They're both grinding. But I'd like when Saskatchewan came back with Brown. I just think he's their instant offense. He's the hardest guy on this team to guard. And yeah, a lot of the things uh, you were talking about right there, we're gonna get a quick look at as well with some highlights from the first half. And, you know, as we had mentioned with the Rattlers, they really had it going, led by Chris Joseph, seven points and three possessions. That was the first basket, a tough one. And here's like, look at that spacing by Guelph, eh? Open up. Here's your aforementioned Rashawn Brown. We talked about that red hot start, not only for Chris Joseph, but also with Kevin Bracey Davis. And uh, they caught fire so much so that they took a toll on the mesh on that side of the court. And the mesh actually needs to be repaired now because of that. And there's the uh, step back from Corey Johnson the long two and as you mentioned getting Corey Johnson going once he saw one go through he was good and the operation staff here at the Meridian Center getting to work on that mesh and the Corey Johnson situation to me is really important because his role on this team is to take open shots and I'll guarantee you up to this game in the last two he hasn't hit a three and coach Kissy said to him no you're a shooter shoot the ball shoot the ball if you think you have to if you think about it then you're not a shooter anymore so I like that because that's a young guy, 
you know, who came out, and then I think he, they just did a good job of building up his confidence. So, talking about this condensed summer series, Joe, and where we're at when you're talking about the different records for these teams, set off the top, no one's going to go undefeated. Most likely, no one's going to go winless. When you start looking at the two and one and the one and two, we have one team at three and one. When do you start really strategizing in that aspect when it comes to points for, points against, and, and you know, resting your players and all the different things that go into what really is a FIBA style tournament? You know, and this one here, there's no time to rest because, because there's a couple crooked numbers up there. You want to get that first and second spot will guarantee you a spot in the semis. So that's huge and you're not going to do anything to do that. I think after game four, urgency sets in. Yes. You yes. know, uh, you can't wait for game five. You can't wait for a specific matchup where you're saying, okay, if we beat them, we're in and they're out. That doesn't work that way because all of a sudden another team wins and you got three or four teams in the hopper, points for and against are coming up. You, I think after four games, that's when the urgency has to be able to. You can define right now, nobody's going to be worse than one in three after four games. Yep. And so they've all got chances to get in there, and nobody's going to be better than three and one after four games. So it's those next two games, and I think as you progress and develop and try to find some ways to build your team. The Ottawa Blackjacks were the final team to get into the win column. They did that yesterday, uh, a, a slim win over the Fraser Valley Bandits, who were actually really just a, a, a defensive stop and a basket away from being three and oh. And now you're sitting here with the Rattlers, who only have two games in the bucket. They have a chance right now to go in two and one, or on the opposite side, one and two, the same as the Blackjack. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that game last night just spoke to the parity of, of, of the six teams that we're dealing with here. You know, uh, the fact that there's the seven teams that we're dealing with here. Yep. The fact that Ottawa was 0 and 2, and Fraser Valley 2 and 0, and they're both trending in different directions. And Ottawa lost Phil Scrub. Yes. And all of a sudden, you know, so you a little adversity, and they just pick it up and grind it through. That's good for the series, I think. And now what you have, you don't have those blowouts anymore. You're having quality games because teams understand each other a little bit better. Yeah, I mean, Fraser Valley, they came out with a loss there the other day, but uh, you know, that's only a minus one when it comes to, uh, you know, their, their plus minus in the overall. That's a pretty good loss to take. If you have to take a loss, that's, that's the way to do it. And I've got to give a shout out to the operations crew at the Meridian Center. We've got a round of applause here from the players because that was quick. They're just saying they need to spread this out so they call on uh, Corey Johnson to uh, make sure the mesh is, is spread out there. And that was a great job. Hey, everybody's had some time off. Everyone's a little rusty. Everyone except the Meridian Center crew they are in mid-season River Hawks, River Hawks, River Lions form. Nighthawks, River Lions. Again, we are live on cbcsports.ca, the CBC Gem app. And you are listening on CEBL Radio Network, CJOY 1460 in Guelph. In this one, Kimmel McKenzie shot out of a cannon firing up the court in that one. McKenzie looking for Craig, waits for it. Craig can't bring it in. It's knocked out of bounds off the Rattlers. Well, Jabari gives you a nice big option in there. Having a little trouble right now getting it together with his hands and his feet. Jonathan Arledge hoping to stay on the floor a little longer than two minutes this time out. Saddle with three fouls. McKenzie, drop off. Jabari Craig, jump stop. And that was deflected by Denzel Taylor. Chris Joseph saves it from going out of bounds. And it's turned right over by Negus Webster Chan, who had to save it again. There's Arledge, offensive rebound, but it goes off of Chris Joseph. Yeah, unfortunately for Saskatchewan, a sloppy possession there. They did a nice job of defending, and then they just lost their intensity. McKenzie, Craig, McCallum. Back to McKenzie, McCallum, swinging around the three-point arc. Anderson, McCallum, eight on the shot clock now. McKenzie dribbling into the free-throw line area. 
Offensive rebound again for the Nighthawks and Trey Darius McCallum with the trade. Darius. Yeah, good rundown for the offensive rebound, second chance opportunity. A little bit of what Saskatchewan was doing in the first half. Janigas Webster Chan, nice little pocket pass to Taylor, but stripped by Anderson. This guy is a defensive lion. McKenzie transition three, no good. High bounce out, and Kemi Osei brings it the other way for the Rattlers. Osei up top to Bracey Davis. Chris Joseph triggers it. Starting the third, the way he started the game, hot for range. Yeah, and Chris Joseph likes that matchup of Jonathan Aldridge on him because he thinks he can take him out. If he takes it, Jonathan starts coming out, then Chris is going to try to get right by him. That cuts the lead to three, 47-44 for Guelph. Kimmel McKenzie, McCollum, kick out. Arledge, the lefty triggers it from range, and it is good from downtown. Six-point lead now for the Nighthawks. Yeah, and it was nice to see the play go on. Where there was a flop on the floor there, and the referees had nothing to do with that. McCallum with a foul. Not a great foul to take. Miles Charvis quickly checking in for McKenzie. You can see that Coach Kissy loves switching off McKenzie for Charvis. No drop off of the energy from the point guard spot. That is Chris Joseph, now working on Jabari Craig. He likes this matchup, crossover left to right, jumper no good though. Battle for the rebound, and it's gonna go the way of the Nighthawks, not even just defensively. Anderson, the way he battles for rebounds is smart. That was an easy board, all of a sudden Anderson yeah. made him rush, and now <laughs> Taylor gets one hand, it goes off. But what I like about Marcus Anderson, a little bit of him and Briante Weber in this, in this series here, they are good on the ball, but they are exceptional off the ball. That's what makes a good player great. And a great pass, Charvis to Craig, pocket pass leads to a crush. Solid, solid roll, good find, good read. Joseph, once again, he gets it to Bracey Davis. Battle down low, Arledge and Denzel Taylor, and it goes back up to Joseph. Picks up his dribble, finds Osei. Kemi Osei faded away off glass, but it rims out. Charvis just clotheslined by Joseph. Bell Lifestyle Products is proud to provide natural health products for the elite athletes of the CEBL, retired athletes, and weekend warriors alike. Never stop doing your thing, men's health empowered by nature. Bell Lifestyle Products. Anderson gets it into Arledge. Poked away by Joseph. Gonna stay with the Nighthawks. 18 on the shot clock, just over three minutes gone here in the third quarter. Anderson. Inbounds to Craig. Craig and Osei collide. And they are calling it on Craig. He had the ball through his body into Osei and got whistled for the foul. Yeah, I didn't know which way that was going. It looked like legs got tangled up there. Kotak Law, the official law firm of the CEBL Summer Series, knows these times have been hard for many Canadians. That's why they're donating $7,000 to the Canadian Mental Health Association. They invite CEBL fans to join them. Visit cmha.ca today and join Nanesh Kotak in supporting the mental health of Canadians from coast to coast. Turnover by the Rattlers. Look out! That is not social distancing, Trey Darius McCallum. The Rattlers have lost that little bit of edge, that intensity. They played with the first two games. I thought they were just focused and determined. Right now, a little sloppy. But that this might be the part of the, the whole training camp that where the teams get tired. McCallum tried to save it from going out of bounds. He ends up over top of the score table but the Rattlers give it right back. Rashawn Brown just ran over Marcus Anderson and he gets called for the offensive foul. I think Welf's doing as good a job as any team of, of playing to the scout report. Like Welf has done a real good job of not just doing their homework as a coaching staff, but the players 
understand strengths and weaknesses of teams. Tyrell Green to Anderson. Arledge that time loses it. Great find. Ose fake to pass down to cutting Gracie Davis for an easy two-handed crush. Saskatchewan needed that. They needed some an easy bucket. Wealth with a six-point lead, 52-46. They have been able to maintain that advantage through the first four minutes here of the third quarter. Good ball movement. No good from McCallum from range, and the Rattlers will take it back the other way, inbounding off the sidelines. Jamal Reynolds checking in for Guelph. It's amazing when you find loose balls on the Guelph side. You look at it, and a situation happens, and you know that Marcus Anderson's involved. Saskatchewan, you know that Shane Asiende is involved and Jelani Price are involved. Like, you know that's going to be the case when you see these things. It's just incredible when you have active players on the offensive boards. Sean Brown now with three fouls. I think they had uh, mistakenly attributed it to Denzel Taylor previously. Oseyande to Chris Joseph. He gets it back to Ose. He drives drive and kick Rashawn Brown airs out a three-pointer from the wing not been the same Rashawn Brown here today Anderson pocket picked by Osei and whistled for the foul is Kemi Osei yeah Rashawn Brown's gonna knock down that shot he won't think twice about it the next yeah. time it comes around Jelaine Price checking in for Rashawn Brown Jose is uh, trying to plead his case about the foul, but the official is not going to take that call back, Joe. And Jose got the delay of game warning because he ran to the other end of the floor and placed the ball in the corner for a second. Hand off, Marcus Anderson. Fires into the corner. Charvis found himself wide open. And we have a malfunctioning whistle, I believe. So the whistle happened early in that play. We just, I guess it malfunctioned and we couldn't hear it. Okay, so it was a foul on Jabari Craig. Oh, sorry, Jelaine Price. Jabari Craig's not on the floor. Of course, when he's talking about 21, he'd be talking about the Rattlers. That's Jelaine Price. 5-10 to go here in the third quarter. 14 on the shot clock. A six-point lead for the Nighthawks. The third quarter that hasn't had quite the same flow that the first half had. No, but there's a grind in this one here. Oh, it's a grind. Every possession. Yep. And that's what you'd expect from these two teams. Charvis stop and go dribble. Fakes the three finds Tyrell Green. Marcus Anderson gets himself into the lane and gets the roll on the layup. Jonathan Aldrich should have got the assist because he set a screen in there, moving Jelaine Price back and opened up the, the key for the easy take. Ose, pull up jumper, Kemi Ose, no good. Reynolds with the rebound and Jelaine Price wrapped him up and immediately Heading the other way to the free throw line. They're in the bonus. That is a positive for the Nighthawks, who only have two fouls of their own. And they've done a great job of rebounding. Timeout on the floor. We'll be back on CBC Sports, CBC Gem, and CJOY 1460. The CEBL is more than just basketball. It's about community, art, music, stories, food, and so much more. It's a professional basketball experience like no other, a lifestyle like no other, and it's time to bring it all together. Welcome to the CEBL Life, a forum where artists, musicians, videographers, community workers, writers, chefs, and innovative minds unite for one purpose, to showcase their talents and connect with a sport we all love, basketball. Head over to CEBL.ca to learn more.
Follow the Saskatchewan Rattlers on social media right now to get the latest news, updates, and behind-the-scenes access that the defending champion Rattlers have to offer. Follow the Guelph Nighthawks on social media right now to get the latest news, updates, and behind-the-scenes access that the Nighthawks have to offer. Talked about Shane Osiande a bunch with his offensive rebounding prowess in this game. It seems like that might have been a point of emphasis for the Nighthawks uh, heading into the third quarter, Joe. Yes, uh, Guelph has not given up an offensive rebound this quarter, and I thought that was their Achilles heel to their defense. So, And at the same time, Guelph still doing a real good job of shooting the basketball. Well, I think the other thing to think about here, too, is uh, Chris Joseph and Kevin Gracie oh, Dace have scored 25 Gracie Davis, sorry, scored 25 of their 46 points. And they have three players that haven't got into the scoring column at all. So it makes your defensive scouting just a little bit easier. And you had mentioned as well, you know, the Rattlers don't have an abundance of shooters. It makes your defensive schemes a little bit easier to plan for. Negus Webster Chandler's 10 of 15 going into this yes, game. Yes. And the fact that they haven't been able to get him shots off, I think a lot of that has to do with Guelph. Yeah, good point. Ose being watched by Miles Charvis. Oseande sets the screen, Charvis gets around it. Joseph with the rock, gets himself to the baseline. Man, Marcus Anderson is a demon defensively, but right there he got called for the foul. You underestimate the length of Chris Joseph. Like he's all of 6'7", he's got long arms, he's got good balance. Seems like he's still kind of battling a bit of an injury out there, wincing just a little bit. The uh, back rimmed but got the roll off the front of the rim as it's 55-47 for Guelph with 4.20 left here in the third quarter. Our second game of the day here from the CEBL Summer Series. Joseph splits a pair. Guess who? Shane Osiande offensive rebound. Blue collar, hard hat worker. That, that hurts, man. So Miles Charvis is d up a guy who probably gives up six inches to. And they called Charvis for the foul. Well, he had to he had to hold him, I guess. But what they did, what what Kemi Ose did real well was recognize it, and he went right to it, and therefore put the pressure on Miles. Charvis picks up his third. Jabari Cray checking back in. Terrell Tate out there as well. Oseande handoff. Price. Another foul. Wow, I was saying that you know the Nighthawks were in the bonus and they still had some fouls to give. They got taken away pretty quick. Three straight fouls, right? When you go back and you look at possession, like you call that a great possession because not only at the free throw line now scoring, but that whole entire possession, you got three fouls. Wow. On one trip down the end of the court here. That was three fouls in 40 seconds, 30 seconds and you didn't have to play defense. That's communication we're talking about, Joe. Yep, it's not a matter of just saying it's pointed and it's yep. echoing it. Even though there's not a crowd in here, you gotta communicate echo. We do have music going on. And one of, the, one of the things that Coach Kissy said before the Summer Series is this isn't a coach-led team, this is a player-led team. So he asked his point guard, Miles Charvis, does Tate know what we're doing defensively? And Charvis goes over and chatted with Tate to ensure he was on the same page. That's what it means to say it's a player-led team. I'm not gonna tell him what we're doing, you tell him what we're doing. Found a team he inbounds with eight seconds left on the shot clock. Jamal Reynolds gets swallowed up. Oseande with the steal. Momentum shifting the way of the Rattlers right now, Joe. Gracie Davis 
drive, gets cut off by Jabari Craig. 12 on the shot clock, Miles Charvis. He lives in passing lanes. He does a great job, and you can do that when you're doing a good job on the ball. Jabari did a great job there on Bracey Davis. Ose drives into the lane. Kemi Ose, he's from Quebec, but he's got the English jump. Wow, tough basket, tough, tough basket. Oh, that was almost an INT from Price. Instead, Jabari Craig got hung on the rim. An easy two. Oh, and the other way. The guys left their bunnies back at the hotel. Two missed dunks. If you see some, some bunnies out scurrying around St. Catharines, put them in a cage, bring them down to the Meridian Center. Every year in every league, the leading block shots goes to the rim. Uh, Reminder, the 2021 CEBL season ticket drives well underway. It'll continue only throughout the CEBL summer series. Visit the rattlers.ca or nighthawks.ca to place your $50 deposit. You can receive a 12% discount and secure your 2021 season tickets. Jamal Reynolds no good from range. It's 55-50 for the Nighthawks. Olu Famatini back in the game. Terrell Tate gets it back up top. Charvis playing a little give and go with Tate behind the three point line. Foul called on Kemi Ose. Another trip to the charity strike. So we go back to those two dunks that were missed. Maybe, maybe fatigue is settling in. You know, that'll affect situations like that. It'll affect long threes. It'll have an effect on the game. So maybe that could be it. A low scoring affair here as well, but to be expected, two teams that really like to grind it out and pull teams into the mud with them. Ray Darius McCallum about to check back into the game here when he can. Coming in for Jamal Reynolds. What the Guelph defense has done a real good job of not letting them go on more than a four point run. They've held, the, they've held Saskatchewan's run, you know, once the momentum starts coming, two, maybe three, and then they come back and they score. Ose, Kai Williams, right off the bench, no good. Terrell Tate saves it, smart move, didn't try to throw it back in blindly, was able to hold on to his feet. To hold his feet, holding on to his feet, would be very, very interesting in a basketball game. Olu Famatini, no good from the corner. Williams with the defensive rebound, 2.08 to go. Famatini tried to take that away, but it goes out of bounds. You cannot get casual. You cannot get casual at any time in this game. Neither of these teams will allow you to do that. Sean Brown back into the game. He went to the bench with three fouls. Back out there now with under two minutes to go in the third quarter. Brown to Taylor, gets it back. Brown tried to uh, wrap around pass it to Taylor on the roll, but Craig kicked it out of bounds. And you notice when Taylor got the ball at the high post, he didn't even look to score. He just ran it as, as a straight passer. And that sends a message to Guelph that they can lay off him as much as they want. Inbound from Brown with 14 on the shot clock, a buck 51 to go here in the third quarter. Brown running off the Denzel Taylor screen. He's looking for Charvis, holding him on his posterior. Foul called again. Not a lot of flow in this game. It's a free throw shooting contest here in the third. And that's four on Charvis. That's massive and on cue, Kimball McKenzie checking back in. Well, you got two heads to this monster here for Guelph. You got two leaders, two young guys who are leaders, and step in. And there's no, I think the flow of the game or the flow, the, the management of the team doesn't change when either of these guys are on the court. They know exa exactly what Coach Kissy wants. It's been a straight their team. And one of the things I said today about the keys to the game was how well they play. They have to outplay the other backcourt. 
right now, it's the Nighthawks just maintaining their lead throughout this quarter with 1.42 to go. The lead is at five. McKenzie. And it's McCallum. Olufamatimi. Man, the vet can still get it done. Slow step, elevate jumper, baseline, good. And this is what Guelph's been doing. They just won't let you get a run going. They come back and they grind and they score well and they'll come back and defend again. Gracie Davis has been silenced here in the second half, really. Trying to get it going. A lot of dribbling and called for the travel. That's what happens when you force it a bit, Joe. Yeah, you know what? I, I think Saskatchewan day one, I thought their offense got them their shot. I think right now a little bit is their shot has become their offense. Too much ISO basketball, not moving it around, and therefore being easier to guard. Also, we're talking about how health is such a huge importance. I feel like the Rattlers are just a little banged up in every position right now, Joe, and I just looked down on the bench, see one player getting worked on by one of the trainers. Another guy all strapped up. Jelaine Price has the tape all over his shoulder. We know Negus Webster Chan's been battling a little bit of something. Chris Joseph as well. Just wonder if that's going to be catching up to him as well. Taylor to Williams. Kai Williams. Man, Nighthawks getting after it defensively. Osei forces it no good. Pulled down by Arledge. Under 40 seconds to go now. 59-52, the Nighthawks with the lead in the final minute of the third quarter. McKenzie drives, pulls it back out, finds Tate, Arledge up top, Famutini, watched by Ose, takes it to the baseline. Man, Olu Famutini, the OG getting it done, baseline jumper, good. Man, solid, good lift still. Just a great situation. And I love the defense by Kimball to start that series. 10 seconds to go here in the third. Now five. Rashawn Brown gets cut off. The Nighthawks with a chance. They don't have to rush it. They got time. Trey Darius McCallan beats the buzzer with the layup. 63-52. The Nighthawks up 11. Heading into the fourth. We'll be back to the Meridian Center after a short break. Elam Endingers. Upon us, and they take the timeout to set the target score. Gets up into the air, gets it to go! There, Bukard in the corner for three. Neo Bukard at the buzzer, drains it, and the Niagara River Lions get out of here with a 93 92 victory. Well, when I was younger in high school, I was a pretty good athlete. Went to the provincial championships in most sports like volleyball, track, basketball, and of course, the goalie. But lately, I've been going up the stairs like Fred Sanford. That's why I use Inflamex. Remember, two M's, two X's. Inflamex is formulated to relieve joint pain, helps address pain and inflammation at the cellular level, and is GMO-free and allergen-free. I'm doing better with a little help from my friends at Bell Lifestyle Products. So you can do the things that you do best. Oh, yeah. Welcome back on cbcsports.ca, the CBC Gem app, and listening on the CEVL radio network tonight on CJOY 1460 in Guelph. Hope you're enjoying the backyard barbecue. Listen in on your 
hometown Guelph Nighthawks, and they're getting it done defensively, forcing turnovers on this Rattler squad. Webster Chan back in the game. He gets it to Chris Joseph. Chris Joseph gets to the baseline jumper while getting hacked. He'll go to the line looking for the three-point play. And it was a good after the timeout come out. They did. They swung the ball quickly and they went from one shooter to another. And that's what they weren't doing in the third quarter. The ball just got stuck and it became ISO one-on-one -on -one and Guelph did a real good job of just staying in front of the ball. Joseph converts it. So we have a 63-55 game. Nighthawks in the lead just over, let's say 15 seconds into the third for those listening on the radio network. Bambutini getting himself to the baseline again. Foul called Bracey Davis. Arguing the foul call. Amy, what do you got? Well, of course, with Olo, Olu at the free throw line, we're going to talk a little bit about him because he's a 15-year pro, like we've mentioned many times. And when I was at training camp earlier last week, that's the first thing Coach Kissy talked about. He called his group in. They were kind of getting on the court and not all clearly stretching and laser-focused. And he told his guys right away, if you want a 15-year pro career, you have somebody in the gym, watch what he's doing. He gets right to work when he gets in here and he takes care of his body. Now I talked to Olu about his body and he said he has a lot of pride in staying fit and certainly it's helped him get up here and play at this level. Guys? Thank you, Amy. That was two things. One thing that I saw about Olu this year, it looks like he's trimmed down. And he's, he, and we all, we all know about that when he hit the 35, 36 range. Uh, and I really feel like that's been a big difference with him this year and it helps you know, Olu, what stopped his career, um, the high-flying career, was the knees. And trimming down that weight is huge. He finds himself open in the corner right now. They finally get it to him. Oh, the bench wanted that to go down, but instead, McCallum offensive rebound, put back. And great positioning by Trey Darius. He got himself in there low and used it. When the shot went up, he was hoping for a miss just so that he can get the rebound. Chris Joseph from range. Chris Joseph, don't forget about the Syracuse product. He's got it going again, cutting the lead to nine. Oh, McCallum has it poked away by guess who? Chris Joseph, Webster Chan, transition three. That would have been huge, but it rims out. Tate, push it. Tate, fouled, he'll go to the line to shoot two. And again, here's, here's Guelph. They get themselves in a situation where they don't let a run happen. You know, uh, Joseph makes a three. Negus Webster Chan has another shot at a three. And before they can make five point runs, they're coming back, getting to the free throw line. And I know uh, Guelph lost a big part of their team heading into this summer series. They had a, a player from the G League that went down and played in the TBT tournament as well. They should have coming in. Holy blank on the name. Probably shouldn't have brought it up, Joe. 6'11 guy. And, and coming into this series, I was curious on how they would kind of rebound around that. But, I mean, this this is a true team in every sense of the word. Yeah, you know what? With teams, there's forming, storming, and norming. They form. They went through all those other stages. They're ahead of a lot of teams. We still got teams in the, you know, in the, in the series here that are still norming to each other. Yep. You know, they're still on the uh, working at it. 10 point lead for the Night Hawks. Oh, pass is picked off and Joseph leads in Webster Chan, but it's stolen by McCallum. He gets it back from Olu, touch pass. Tipped out of bounds. Chris Joseph very active defensively right now. Yeah, tough, tough turnover there because that was a good run out for Saskatchewan. But what we're finding is Saskatchewan with their length has touched a lot of balls, in particular this quarter. Quick timeout though, floor here. Good time to remind you of some upcoming scheduling. We got the Rattlers. Next game against the Edmonton Stingers tomorrow on CBC at 3.50 Eastern time, while Guelph 
they play the Stingers on August 3rd, and that will be their next game at 7 p.m. And the next game in general, not involving either of these teams, is Hamilton and Fraser Valley at 1.30 p.m. tomorrow. That's Fraser Valley sitting at 2-1 and one that were very close to going 3-0. and oh, And the Honey Badgers, who lost a very important player yesterday. I was watching from home when that occurred. Dwayne Notice, prayers up for you, Dwayne, and, and hope all is well in your surgery upcoming on the Achilles injury. You know, Dwayne is somebody who has a, a lot of belief system and has a very strong support system with him. I know he'll make through it okay, but I mean, especially in the summer season, everything that Dwayne Notice had with the Raptors 905, just terrible to see him go down with that Achilles injury. And you know what, he, the guys like Dwayne do and what Dwayne I think will do, he'll compete with it. He'll let the doctors tell them what you yep. know what his timelines yep. are, and then he'll compete with it, and he'll challenge it, and that's the what that's how he'll get better. And his younger brother Marcus Carr had an, had a very bad injury about two years ago as well, and the same sort of thing. And I know it was his his mother that really helped him kind of realize, you know, you can be upset or you can just battle back, and we know that that family would do it. Speaking of battling. McKenzie with two high off of glass, push the lead back up to 12 with 7.35 to go here in the fourth. Yeah, Guelph just doesn't lose their focus, and that's really important in this series. Brown goes the opposite way from the screen. He's working on McKenzie, lots of contact. Those two really going back and forth, but good on McKenzie to go over and help up Brown. And now McKenzie dropping another dime, letting everybody know, hey, we got a wet spot over here. But you know what? I appreciate that so much because that's how injuries happen. That's a true point guard, true floor jump. Well, he's in control of himself today. He's in control of the entire situation. Nothing's going too fast for neither him nor Miles Jarvis. Now Marcus. we got Marcus Anderson, sorry, at playing the point. This is the first time today for Guelph that neither Miles or Kimball aren't on the floor. Again, Charvis with four fouls. Brown working on Joel Friesen. Friesen ties him up. Brown doing that Tony Parker move where you hold off the uh, defender behind you while dribbling. Yeah, he snaked in the middle, had the guy on his back, knew he was getting chased, and just used his body to keep space. That's a two for Rashawn Brown to cut the lead back down to 10. We are three minutes away from Elam ending time. Arlich working on Oseyande. Foul on Oseyande. Arlich ends up on the floor. That one hurts because it was four seconds on the shot clock. Both teams trying to stay out of foul trouble with Elam ending time coming up especially the Rattlers who find themselves still down 10. Denzel Taylor checking back in for Oseande. Friesen, inbounds. Anderson running the point as Joe had mentioned. And Charles Kissy calling out the play and sending people around the floor. And it's a turnover. Again, missing their point guard on the floor right now. And that is a massive bang around three from Webster Chan, cutting the lead to seven. It was a good find to find him in the corner, find him early. Anderson, Tyrell Green looking for the answer, no good. Look at Jabari Craig getting active on the glass, but they say it's off of the Nighthawks. And that's a situation that we saw earlier. You don't put a body on him. Jabari Craig is just so long and lanky that he's going to be able to get a lot of touches. Fredarius McCallum checking in for Olu Fountain. It's a great shift for Olu. Yep. So we're just over two minutes from Elam ending time. And the Rattlers are stuck seven, still very much in this game. They just got to stop. This would be a big basket. And who else? Chris Joseph taking it hard to the hole, earns himself two shots at the line. Using the dribble handoff, just that cross action, just to create a little bit of spacing and movement with the ball. 
Green, just his first personal. Joseph has been much of the offensive spark for the Rattlers, but he misses the first. Joseph sitting at 17 points, six of 11. And he missed them both. And skying for the rebound is the length of Jabari Craig. Yeah, Over top of the midcourt line is Anderson. Anderson hands it off to McCallum. He's cut off by Negus Webster Chan. Friesen now gets it over to Anderson. Craig came up for the screen. Friesen now, pull up. Great defense, Negus Webster Chan. Oh, smart move by Jabari Craig. He saved it out of, or sorry, off of Kemi Ose, who's fallen out of bounds. We're down to two seconds on the shot clock here. Kimball McKenzie checking back into the game, so they do have a true point guard back into it to the Nighthawks. And they drop off, just beat the shot clock. Great job by Tyrell Green. The Rattlers want a timeout. The lead's back up to nine, 5.30 to go. Man, two missed free throws that end. Two seconds on the shot clock on this end, and they score. They only had two on the shot clock. I thought they were going to get a five count there on the baseline. Not only do they get it in bounds, they get a two-foot shot for the lay-in to put the lead back up to nine. Yeah, sometimes when you wait on your baseline out of bounds place, there's a first option, second option, third option. Coach may have actually looked for a third option on that. Because they Guelph with the Guelph does a good job in their baseline out of bounds. They put a man in the corner to occupy it. So now they're saying, let's go four on four. So and we've got a little bit of more space. And what happened there was uh, Guelph went underneath the baseline, Green went underneath and had a defender chasing him, so he just stopped at the rim. Yep. And then therefore he had a good seal. Good play. Absolutely, I mean, the Nighthawks really playing great team basketball, a team that's really come together quickly under Coach Kissy here, and, and very impressed with what they've been able to do. And now remember, they went big to start the game. Jonathan Arledge got in foul trouble. To be able to, on the fly, be able to adjust and maintain a lead. Ever since the Rattlers got out to that early lead, it's been all Nighthawks. Now, don't get me wrong, the Rattlers have been in this game, but Guelph has been in control. Yeah, and it's been a grind, right? They've been controlling it on the defensive end. We're not gonna let you score two buckets in a row. We're not gonna let you. And then come down and executing, not turning the ball over, yes. not, you know, not giving up transition baskets. They definitely haven't been outworked. And that's all you can really ask in a short summer series like this. Bracey Davis has been cooled off since that red hot first quarter. Ose being watched by McKenzie, 523 to go in the fourth. Offensive foul. And then that's a huge turnover. A huge turnover. Here you come out of after a timeout, you come out of a situation. All you got to do is set. And it, and if it and if the screen isn't successful in doing what it was trying you were trying to do, that's okay. The turnover is the worst thing you could do. Absolutely killing the Rattlers right now. McKenzie up top. Jabari Craig, alley -oop jam, ended up almost hitting the scoreboard over top of the court. He back rimmed the two-handed slam. So there's a great rule that you know some people don't know about FIBA. If it's a jump ball and two people are fighting for it and a violation occurs because of the jump ball, it's not a violation. So there are people are saying, well, there was a travel. He had yeah. the ball, he was walking with it. But because they were involved in that jump ball, that takes precedent over the violation. Uh, a great moment there when Jabari Craig went over to Kimball McKenzie and gave him a big hug saying, I'm sorry for not throwing down that dunk because that would have been the highlight of the day. And McKenzie just laughed and smiled and said, don't worry about it. And they called it offensive foul on Craig on the hook. And he got caught that time. He tried it a couple times. He's, all he has to do is get low and wide. He used his hand to hook his position in there. Kind of hard to hide that when you have a wingspan like Craig. But if he gets low, all of a sudden that those legs become a huge span. Jose gets it back from Joseph. 
Sprague comes out at him. Ose fires it. Bracey Davis, that pass was just too hard right through his fingers. So both coaches have used their use it or lose it timeout in the second half. But even when I watch Guelph substitute, yeah. you know what? The guys are coming in, yeah. coming out. Yeah. It, they bought into this team. They bought into what they're well, doing as a the group. the bench is up every time. High five, shocking. Wow. <laughs> you gonna take that joke? It was gonna happen. I know. It was <laughs> going to happen. NCAA trained players, you can't call timeout. You can't do it. The, the best is the other NCAA player runs through his players' defense and says he called the timeout. Not allowed to. Not allowed to with FIBA rules. Bracey Davis pulls it back out. McCallum. This is what I like. Wealth messed up, but they are manning up defensively right now. Joseph just working his way back to the line consistently. Well, nothing, nothing, Guelph is doing a great job of nothing is easy. And the fact that Guelph's been, and Chris has missed his last three free throws. Yeah. So it's not like the fouling is even hurting you. Four in a row missed for Chris Joseph. 4.31 to go, and Guelph has held a strong professional team to 63 points. You knew that one was going through for Joseph. 4.31 to go. 72-64, the Guelph Nighthawks in the lead. Elam ending time will be starting at the first whistle under four minutes. Joel Friesen checking back into the game for the Nighthawks. Coach, Coach off Terrell Green who just came on. Coach Kissy makes the substitution because he's going to the Elam time. He doesn't want to turn over here. He doesn't want them to build up momentum. He knows in a situation they're going to put some full court pressure on him. He wants to make sure he has his best options out there and has four options for the inbounder to throw the ball to. Just double checking that a whistle occurred between the substitution. Inbounding to Friesen. And a great outlet to McKenzie. He beats everybody down. He invited the contact. I don't know about that one. But I'm going to go back to the decision to Coach Kissy there. He put someone who knew exactly what was going to happen. Joel Friesen was the third option on that press break, the press attack. Kenzie just took off down the floor and he was led perfectly by Friesen again. One thing to draw up the play, another to have it executed to that level and it was executed perfectly here with 4.26 to go. McKenzie hits the first. That was McKenzie screaming, get in <laughs> on that free throw. Ball listened though. Yeah, I, I like the game management here from Guelph, right from Coach Kissy to his guards to everybody. And now here they are putting a defensive substitution in because right now they're playing for the next they're playing for that whistle under four minutes and I know coach Kissy would want me to shut out the coaching staff he has underneath him as well a lot of Raptors 905 over there some other grinders working their way up to coaching ranks and very very special group over there some up and coming stars in the coaching ranks and with the steal Anderson McCallum for three what a huge shot. The lead's at 13 for the Nighthawks. 4.02 to go. Kenny Ose back the other way. Oh, smart move. McCallum swats it off the rim. He knows that rule. I was just about to say it. <laughs> Very smart. And a foul on Ose. So we're inside four minutes, Joe. Okay, so we're at Elam time right now. This is it. This is now after the free throws are, are shot. It will determine what our target score is. Nine points from the team that's leading will be added on. These two free throws will be shot, and 
Saskatchewan, no matter what happens on the second free throw, will get the ball back. Uh, a couple things that we have to be aware of, Elam time, and this is important. So right now the target scorer. Carver splits him. I'll get it right this time, 87. I was, I was going to do it for target you. Target score is 87, so now the first team to 87 wins. Which I believe was very close to the Elam ending score in the last game as well. Yes. Now, a couple things that we have to understand. When the CBL adopted Elam, we're the first FIBA league to adopt it. So what we've done is we we said uh, a couple things you have to do. We've taken the last two minutes of FIBA time and adopted it in the last four minutes of Elam time for the CBL. So if you're scored upon, you can substitute. That's, that's, if that's a FIBA rule. Uh, if you're fouled off the ball, this is a, a unique rule. If you're fouled off the ball in Elam time, yeah. it's, it's what sportsman like. So if you foul somebody on a sideline out of bounds or baseline out of bounds, after a timeout, team can move the ball to the front court or the back or the back court. They have the choice, but they don't have to clear until the timeout's over. Yes. So that's a that's a, that's a tough one. And then the referees don't warn you if you're breaking the plane. So you can put pressure on the basketball but you can't reach over. Those are the last two minutes of FIBA rules that have been adopted to CBL, and that's the way we, we run Elam. I, I think it's been exciting, it's been entertaining, and there's a game-winning bucket every night. And the players and the coaches are both learning as we go, even from day one to now day five. Um, it has been day six. Whatever it is, about the midway point of the summer series thus far, You've definitely seen an evolution in the players, an evolution in the coaching, and I'm very, very interested to see when we get to the quarter semis and championship, how this comes into play and how the mentality of what they've learned in the summer series is applied in those single elimination games. 78-64, 87 the target score. Let's get going in Elam time. Osei. Had it stripped and went off his leg, out of bounds. Nighthawks getting it back. So Saskatchewan needs a 23 to eight run here, or better. So here's Guelph who only give, won't even give up four points in a row. Mm -hmm. He just grinded. Guelph just has to play the same way. The clock's not a factor, so Guelph shouldn't change anything that they've been doing. Miles Charvis playing with four fouls. Osei on him. Charvis with a larger Gracie Davis on him. Joel Friesen traveled with the ball. He has had a game to forget of Joel Friesen. Yeah, he was predetermined there what he wanted to do with moving that basketball. I think if Joel would have just reversed it and punched it, he would have been just fine. <laughs> Nighthawks just trying to swap in anybody that they can, but they had him sent back to the bench there. Ooh, Sean Brown. Gets it to Oseande, foul called on Jonathan Arledge. And when you look at the shooting chart for Oseande, you know where they're all gonna be, right inside the paint. Jason, I'd be remiss if I don't talk about Coach Kissy's staff. I had the chance to coach Coach Kissy and recruit him at McMaster, and one of his assistant coach, Steve Maga, was the Moser winner, most valuable player in the country and he played at McMaster, and that's where they got to know each other as teammates. And you have Coach Wumi, who's also one of the coaches with the Raptors 905, one of the apprentice coaches is there. She's an up and coming star in, a, in her own right. And a bunch of other people helping behind the scenes. Oh, wide open was Charvis. McKenzie missed him on the baseline. Arledge. Oh, finds a cutting, McCall. What a great pass and a great cut. And they played through that miss, right? Miles yeah. didn't get upset. They just yep. played through it. Very important. Same point. possession. Yep. And a steal. Arledge back the other way. He's got numbers with him. Jonathan Arledge running it like a point guard. Basket in the bump looking for the three-point play. And I love the fact we're in Elam time and all four of his teammates were running the floor with him, looking to be an option for him. And I think that it helps that they're just rifling through players. Everyone's staying fresh. Speaking of fresh, Olufamatimi coming out as well. 
Got a shout out Olu Famatini. 14 points on five of seven shooting, playing 20 minutes in this game. Also, three steals for the OG of the CEBL. 82-66, target scores 87. The lefty, Arledge at the line. Gets the roll. Now just four away from the target score. Oh, the Rattlers still have 21 to go. Brown running the point for the Rattlers. Oh, Arledge jumps out at him, all kinds of length. Brown kicks out Joseph. Great head fake, finds Osei on the extra pass. Osei, nothing but net from downtown. Good offense. And the fact that Brown was able, the fact that Brown was able to find them was, was really important. Here's Elam time. You get scored upon, you can, you can sub. So now what coaches will do, offense to defense possibly. Guelph wants an offensive team here. And Sass uses that opportunity to call a timeout. So it's 83-69, target score is 87. Nighthawks with just four more to go. And with that, if they were to hold on for this win, which right now in Elam time looks like it's a pretty good chance that they will, the Nighthawks would improve to three and one, which is a great spot for them to be at. They'd be tied with the Stingers who just won earlier today. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and I'm, I'm so impressed that they're three and one. They, they said both those teams, their players know their roles. Absolutely. And I think when they're, they're at a different level in understanding who they are. 83-69 here. If this was a regulation game, I would say the Rattlers would have a very little chance of finding a strategy to get back in the game. Elam doesn't give you, it gives you a better chance because you can still score and defend your way in. Yep, that yep. third factor, the clock not being available, gives you a chance as, as a losing team to play perfect and have a chance to win. The Rattlers squad that out there, look, they look a little bit gassed. The Nighthawks have been able to kind of cycle through their players a little quicker and a little easier. McKenzie able to run up and down that baseline. A little bit of pressure shown by the Rattlers. Charvis drives, kicks out. McCallum, he has been great in this second half and gets it to go again, Trey Darius McCallum. And that starts with the kick out by Miles Jarvis. He didn't attack the basket to score or to push a shot up there. Yeah, and you see, uh, you see that the Nighthawks do not want to foul. Very smart. They are now just a bucket away from improving to three and one on the CEBL Summer Series. McKenzie gets into the lane. Kick back out. Miles Charvis has the ball, working on Rashawn Brown. Finds a cutting Arledge. Jonathan Arledge, no good. Offensive rebound and put back. Terrell Tate got out his lunchbox, got to work on the glass, and gets the Elam Ender. 87 71, the Guelph Nighthawks. Are they the surprise of the CEBL Summer Series sitting at 3-1 and one, tied atop the standings with the Edmonton Stingers? Well, they certainly look it. And, and not only that, like they're imposing their will every game. Like they wore the Rattlers out. Like they just wore them down. They were aggressive. They're the, right now, they're the best team defense we've seen out here. And I just, I said, I can't talk it up. I think their young guards stepped up today and didn't have to score a lot of points, but they controlled what coach wanted. The Rattlers fall to one and two. They have quite a schedule ahead of them. They just got off their two day break. So, you know, there's not an awful lot of time for them to regroup. And the Rattlers are the only team in the series that have two back-to-backs. So they play their first back-to-back -back tomorrow against Edmonton, who's coming off a back-to-back. -back. But then they've got another back-to-back. -back. And joining Amy Audibert is Trey Darius McCallum, Amy. Take it away. Yeah, thanks, Sean. Trey Darius, everyone knows you score more points to win a ball game, but your team's defensive effort was something special tonight. Talk us through that. Uh, that's the biggest thing we want to do is come out and play defense, be aggressive towards our opponent, just let them know we're here to play. Uh, 
of course, it's going to be a close game every time with the Elam rule now, so we just got to make sure to bring the, uh, the statement pretty much. And I'm going to switch it to the other end now. 12 guys got in for Guelph. 12 guys scored. What kind of message is that sending to the rest of the league? Pretty much saying everybody come ready to play. Uh, isn't one person not going to be the team for herself. Is everybody that's there. So we got 12 guys that's deep and just ready to go, and uh, they got a perfect attitude to win. So that's what happened. All right. We appreciate your time. Enjoy your rest day tomorrow. <laughs> you guys you. earned it. All right. We'll go back Thank to you. you. Trey, Daler, Trey Darius McCallum led the Nighthawks with 16 points, but they really had everybody in the points column. An outstanding team effort for the Guelph Nighthawks. And we send into tomorrow where CBC Sports will take things away on the main network. Once again, Joe, what's your takeaway from today's day in general? I, I just thought the entire day was good basketball. I just thought Guelph just grinded and, and did a great job, especially in that fourth quarter. I thought the first game today was exciting, interesting, and a great Elam ending to a, to a day. I, I like, I, you know, there's a little separation happening right now, and fatigue might be an issue too, but it could be who played and some of the styles. I think no, I, I think it's going to be tough for anybody to still go 5-1, and one, mm -hmm. but I think 4-2 and two will get you one of the first two spots, and I think you're going to have to get two wins, three wins maybe, to get inside the tournament. Well, we're back on the main network tomorrow, CBC Sports, as we have a doubleheader starting up at 1.30 tomorrow afternoon for Amy Otterbert and Joe Rasso. I'm Jason Tom signing off on CBC Sports.